Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nice to be back with you again with the old Bill Crane Report. My good friend Dwayne Weiss is here with me. Good morning. And, um, well, sir, we might as well jump right into this, I guess. I yeah, will. Um, <clears throat> what on earth, could we have, in your wildest dreams, predicted what's going on in the Ukraine? No, no. Uh, it's it's like the Antichrist came to Earth. Um, it's uh, it's satanic. It's it's World War Two. Yeah, uh, vintage, uh, scorched Earth. So I'm not well. And now let's uh, back up. I don't. I'm not sure there's too much evidence of scorched Earth. In fact, there was a guy on Fox this morning, and he was. Uh, saying, look, let, let's put the rhetoric to one side and just look at facts. He said, Putin, mm -hmm. I, I think, is showing a lot of restraint. Um, he's not trying to kill civilians. He's not trying to destroy everything. He would like to take Ukraine intact. Well, of course, he doesn't yeah. want everything destroyed. And um, his aim is to remove uh, the president, Zelensky, and replace him with someone who thinks the a way puppet, Putin puppet. does. A yeah, puppet. a puppet. Uh, and as far as harming the people of Ukraine, I don't think that he has any intention of that. He wants one thing and one thing only, a neutral Ukraine as a buffer to NATO countries. Maybe. Yeah. That, now, I'm, oh, I'm <clears throat> paraphrasing mm -hmm. him. Yeah. I, oh, okay. Uh, it's a lieutenant, a colonel, a retired colonel. I got his name in here someplace. I've probably heard of the same guys. I've been switching back and forth. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he, uh, Stuart Vining wasn't buying a lot of what he was saying. Well, uh, and he said, look, he said, the, w it's in the news. We're attacking the, um, that he's a, Putin is attacking the nuclear facility. Well, He's not. He's surrounding it, and but he has, it's still generating electricity. He hasn't shut it down. Um, if he wanted to really hurt the people, he'd shut the power down. I, well, see, I don't see. I saw last night on Fox uh, a general talking. He says he just they're just don't hit hit the right spots yet. They're shooting at it. But he said the fact that they set off the administration building on fire instead of something else is just a matter of luck. Yeah. But he, he thinks that, see, now this is this was his his take was, this was on Fox. General Keene? I've seen him before. His, Jack, Jack Keene? No. No. Um, the three star general? It might be a two star. I'm two not star. Sure. Okay. But he said his, his take is that it's a little further in that. Putin knows that that's a, a crippling point for Ukraine and, and that part of Europe. Because one, it's the largest nuclear plant in Europe, one of the top 10 in the world. Take that out, you take at least 25% of Ukraine's power. You can actually threaten them if, if you blow up one of those things and contaminate like Chern Chernobyl, you, hundreds of square miles are gonna be contaminated for generations. And that's all, it's big producing areas of grain and corn and hay and everything else. But he says he's using that as a stick. But and that it, would be a self-defeating maneuver because he wants. Well, here's, here's where they come in. He said, Putin is setting on the world's largest reserves of coal and oil and natural gas. The Arctic oil is huge. He said, what happens if that goes down? 
What happens to the price of his stuff? Through the roof. He's sitting on top of the King Midas's pile for the rest of the for generations. And I, it made sense, but they got there's so many different theories about this sale. But he said that just, I, and he said too. He said these can't. He's he said there's one of two things, or maybe a combination. One. Russia's military technology is not as great as we think it is. I think that's, that's a he given. He says because they're, they're hitting targets they shouldn't be hitting, apartment buildings and stuff. He said, that, that's not precise. That's, that's, that's slop. Two, they are precise and don't give a damn. They throw terror into the, into the uh, civilian or a combination of both. And he thinks it's a combination of both because he, said, he, he views Putin as a man that wouldn't give a damn if he had to kill 100,000 people to prove a point. He said he's just like Stalin was. Yeah. It doesn't matter to him if you live or die. As long yeah. as I get what I want, what I'm, I'm going to do. That's right. When he told uh, one of his underlings to purge yeah. the officer corps That's right. in Poland, um, and he said, uh, down to what level? He said, kill them all. Kill them all. He said, uh, I would rather overkill mm -hmm. than to leave one of them left standing. Yep. yep. That's the mindset up here. This this general claimed he, he thinks Putin is the most dangerous man since Adolf Hitler. Well, I'm sure he's right. Yep. I'm sure he's right. Because uh, Putin um, has no morals whatsoever. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. None. There's no, no thought of consequences. He's and oh, I said he's a, he's a short thinker, as he called him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think of what the consequences are going to be tomorrow. I want this done today. I I don't worry about tomorrow. He made a deal with the Chinese that he would hold off the invasion until oh yeah uh, the Olympics were over. Everybody everybody predicted that. Yep. And what happened when the Olympics were over? Boom! Immediately yep. went in. Yeah. But have you noticed who's been quiet? China. Yeah. Ain't saying a word. Well, I agree. Yeah, uh, China is just laying back in the weeds. Now, China has a lot to lose. They that's, that's, are the exporters of the world. That's why they're quiet. They're going to. They're just sitting back and seeing what. What's the reaction here? What's the world reaction? Should we get involved? Maybe not, because we got a lot to lose here. Lot to lose. Yeah. If we throw our lot in with the Russians. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the world says, we no more business with you. We Shut become you the pariah off. right with them. Yeah. Yep. So it's interesting. To, it's interesting. It's scary. It's scary. And it's unnecessary to be happening. But it's sad it's happening. It's a huge tragedy. Well, another thing, this guy, this guy was really interesting. At first, I, thought I just kind of picked him up, you know, and so I started listening to him. And... Uh, even Monica started listening to that. When she starts paying attention and stops, yeah. stops doing the Sudoku, there's... But he said uh, that as far as him really worrying about NATO on his doorstep, mm -hmm. he said, when you got missiles that can, you know, both sides, got missiles that you can put it through the uh, air vent or a window, it doesn't matter if that damn missile is... a five miles away or 50 miles or 100 miles or 500 miles. It's a moot point anymore. Yep. Uh, you know, um, the, the other uh, point that this guy made um, when, and Stuart kind of poo-pooed him and said, oh, I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. He's well, he says, let's watch, shall we? Yep. He said, this is going to be over seven to 10 days. He has now achieved what he wanted to achieve. Uh, and he's going to cut back. He's also facing resistance he didn't think he yeah, would Yeah, he face. didn't think he was going to put that kind of pushback. Even at home, he didn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when, when citizens in Russia are demonstrating in the, in the streets. Yeah, you, you make a demonstration in Russia. You're making a personal commitment because it's not like here, yeah, where you can take your sign and walk up and down the street and yell and throw water bottles yeah. whatever you want, nothing happens to you. 
Also, uh, I think one of the things, too, that we have to factor in is he would, in his mind, be the greatest hero of all times in Russia That's right. if he reunites yep. the old USSR. That's exactly that. That was part of the point, that part of that presentation. Yep. That you, know what, you know what? Uh, if you were a citizen in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, or even Poland, Mm -hmm. I think you got plenty to be concerned about. Oh, yeah. Because they don't want to go back to the no. USSR type. Era. And it's also going to be one hell of a showdown because Poland is a NATO member. That's right. And I believe so Lithuania yep. and Latvia they are, are also. They're new, but they're, they're yep. still there. So that's an awful lot of chips on the table. Yeah, um, and my wife, the uh, she she's Lithuania, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. The uh, apple of my <coughs> eye made quite a comment. She usually she sits and fiddles with knitting and all yeah, that. We, we so, get blood sisters there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, fiddles with her iPad. And she's listening, and she said, "Do you know what the U.S." and Russia have in common? And I said, what? She said, they both have crappy leaders. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I thought that was a rather succinct point. Look at our leadership right now and go back. We can, I, you can't let Trump out of this mix either because he's got his, and well, right now to me, Bush didn't look that bad. George W. is going to look. He's looking better every is day. going to judge him yeah. much better with the performance of these people that have followed, followed him. It, the people that followed yeah. him, that's right. But uh, look what the quality of leadership that Ukrainians sit with, though. That's Zelensky. He's amazing. I think so, anyway. I think he's going to be a, he's a national hero already. And I think history at this point is going to write him up. He's going to have a great legacy, whatever that's worth. He may not have a long lifespan. That's right. But historically... He'll be a martyr. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's going to leave the country. Oh, I don't think so either. Nope. You know, the U.S. gave him the option, you know, you know, right off the bat. Do you want to, you want to evacuate? You want out? You want out and set up a, a government outside? He said, no, I'll, I'll stay with him. And the other night he was getting ready to do go out with the troops or something to do something mm. right on the, you know, right in with them. And I saw a cartoon and I don't know where it was. And they showed uh, uh, leadership different. I don't know how to hit, but they, they put a split screen and they had Zelensky going out to fight. He said something about when, when your country needs you, this is one way to do it, Zelensky. And they showed, uh, uh, what's his name from Texas? The one that ran when uh, when to Cancun when when the things got going. Uh, ah, the senator from Texas, Cruz. Yeah, Cruz. They show Galinsky Gal going out to you know, his battle fatigue, and Cruz with his little suitcase running down the <laughs> hallway to get on the airplane quick to get Cancun. They said, this is the difference between their leadership and our leadership. Well, yeah. I mean, when you take a look at our leadership, I mean, really. Take a look at it. I mean, you've got Biden, but the, the, the next tier, I mean, Kamala Harris is a practical joke. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she is, it's absurd it's, that she is a vice president. It's uh, that I'm going to pick a woman of color and that's it. I don't care if she's qualified or not, I'm going to pick her. That's that danger of doing that. Now, Dwayne. We have 13% um, in this country African Americans. And if you cut that in half, mm -hmm. we have probably six and a half or seven million yep. that are female. Yep. Okay, so you have taken a 300, and, I don't know, 330 20, 330 mean, yeah. million people and narrowed the search down to seven million. The rest of them, forget about it. Forget it. Yeah. 
I mean, this is a sight third. unseen. The problem is that's sight unseen too. Yes. You just automatically dis dis uh, discriminate against them and eliminate them. I uh, won't even look at them. No. 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 Uh, they're doing the same thing with the Supreme Court justice. Sure. That, that's what yeah. I mean. It's the same. It's the same, same kind of scenario. Same bloody thing. Yeah. You cannot justify that. No, you cannot. I don't care what you call it. You can't call it affirmative action. You can't call it anything but simply bias. Yeah. But that's exactly right. And you know what? Uh, I'm, and I'll uh, we might as well go right to drive the needle right off the dial here. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you what. I'll bet you I could go to Boston tomorrow, okay? Walk around and find a hundred men that would be better mayors than Mayor Wu. Oh, absolutely. But not that the fact that they're men, it's just that they're hundred individuals there. She's a woman. Yep. And she is um, a minority. And uh, gee whiz, check her off. What's your qualifications? Really and truly now, what has she accomplished? Well, she's got a family. Mm -hmm. mm, after that, well, she was on the Boston City Council. Oh boy, now there's a <laughs> big feather in your yeah, hat. Yeah, that's, that's really a... Patronage University. Ay, ay, ay. You know the biggest fear I have? Hmm. This, two things. Uh, combine them both. The little man complex. I get no respect. Yeah. Um, and he feels cornered with, if this continues to escalate, and we start rattling sabers about, well, you know what? We have nuclear weapons, too. I mean, that would be a terrible thing to say. Mm -hmm. But that paranoid little worm would say, you know what? I'm like Hitler. If we can't win the war, you people don't deserve to live. That's so right. So destroy Germany. Yeah. Yeah. You go down the drain. And what if he says, I'm pulling the plug on this whole mess. I'm setting off some nukes, and the hell with it. The yeah. world can go to hell. That, they, they, that general said that, that was, he called that a KGB mentality. Yeah. Where he, this guy, well, Putin was the head of the KGB at one point. I don't know if he was the head or a member. I'm not he sure. He was a ranking member, but, at uh, least. I'm he's not got, sure that he was he's head, got that He's got that KGB mentality yep. about everything. Yep. The only good enemy is a dead enemy. Yep. Um, now, so, so what, what has really and truly, though, I think, is the story. Uh, it's the solidarity shown by the rest of the world. Yeah. When you get, when you get Switzerland committing. Yeah. To anything, and France. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, the, the contrary uh, people are the um, neutrals, Sweden, Finland, Finland, yep. which Russia also covets. That's right. That should be part of us. Um, I, I, and they did it. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, we're shutting down our airspace to Russian planes. Uh, commercial flights, bang, can't come through our country anymore. Uh, fr freezing bank accounts, mm -hmm. uh, canceling oil contracts. Uh, it is uh, a chain of events. I'll be willing to bet you Putin never thought would happen the way it happened. Oh, I don't think, I think that he, he was, it's going to be another Crimea. I'm just going to walk in. And it's going to be a walkover. A walk in. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Exactly. So, Dwayne, uh, other than China, Iran, India, uh, Vietnam, and Singapore, of all places, the world has condemned this guy's actions. Absolutely. What? 
I'm not, I guess the question is not what I hope the outcome's going to be, but what, what is, what's the end game? What's, how, how is this going to end? I, I don't know. I, I really can't, I, I don't even have, have an opinion because there's so many people that are hell a lot smarter than I am, which is not saying much, but uh, I mean military people. I'm not so sure the military uh, people are the brightest in the world no, because they, they've got blinders on. They, they, they themselves have varied outlooks or opinions on what's going to happen. So I think, you know, I could throw two cents in here. It wouldn't, wouldn't even make a trickle in it. But uh, I, I, I see Putin hurting himself badly. I see Russia's uh, status in the world going back 50 years, maybe 100 years, being, um, I think it's going to take a long time, regardless what happens here, for them to, to live this down. But although I suspect, and I, I don't know for a fact, but just a couple of things that I saw again last night of a woman or one of the refugees with her little kids. She said that she has a lot of, she has family and friends in Russia, and they, they talk uh, via uh, Facebook. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, social media. Mass media or whatever. Yeah. whatever social the term. media. Yeah, yeah social, the social media. And uh, they don't believe her. They say, what are you talking about? That's not like that in Ukraine. We don't have our troops there doing that. We're building hospitals. We're we're building schools. We're helping them out because there's there's a little element there that we want to don't want them to to, to suffer from. We're, we're we're humanitarian. We're not doing any of that. And they, they're trying to tell them on on social media. No, they're not. Russian TV is not reporting any of this. Not like this. Wow. I I'm, I don't know why I should be surprised. Yeah. It's, it's getting out, but it's not yeah. like yeah. it's not filtering down into Joe Public yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. I um. Again, that was just one. That was just one woman's yeah. reporting, so it was supposing not supposing this retired colonel that I listened to this morning. Let's just say that maybe he's got some of the right idea. Mm -hmm. And Putin does, in the next five to six days, take the cities that he wants and says, okay now, yep. get rid of Zelensky. I'm going to, you know, I don't think that he would execute him. In fact, he might not even imprison him. Right. But he's going to exile him. Uh, and then said, okay, now, let's all catch our breath. Let's take a big sigh of relief and think about what we've done. We have seen Ukraine going in the wrong direction, wanting to join NATO. This is not something we could allow to have a border with a NATO country with nuclear weapons a hundred yards away from our territory. We stopped it. Now, let's take some steps about getting things back to normal. Now, what would the world's reaction be to that? I think at some point now that that would be very acceptable. I do too. I, I don't think, see, I, I don't think the the NATOites, I, I don't know who's who's in charge of NATO. I can't even tell you who the commanding general is on, in NATO. Is it a Belgian? Well, that's where the headquarters is. Yeah, yeah. It, it very well could be, but uh. I, I don't think that, that that's, there's that much fanaticism 
in NATO. Well, in fact, I think they're a little bit on the wussy side. Well, uh, you know, I tend to agree with you because look at how many countries weren't paying. Yeah, that's right. They weren't the, even the, paying their, their full stipend. Yeah. Um, I think Putin could sell a lot of the world mm -hmm. on that. And I think a lot of the world would say, show me. You know, never mind words, show us that you've... Uh, that, though that was your aim, mm -hmm. that's the only way you could achieve it, um, and let's get things back to normal. I think that the, there's a lot of countries in the world that would say, show us, and yep. we'll get things back to normal on our end, maybe. If he, if he pursues this and it continues the way it is, even if it don't continue it, I don't know what the word means anymore or what can be done and that's, that's war crimes this this guy he he's putting himself up that he should be executed you it's a war crime to attack a nuclear that's facility right. yeah uh not to mention knocking down schools, schools and, and hospitals and apartment and, buildings yeah and, which is so, some of which may be collateral damage yeah and it may be the incompetency um, or the overly eagerness of the troops, mm -hmm. who knows? But he certainly bears responsibility for it, for setting the whole thing in action. And I think at some point, Russia bears the financial responsibility for repairs, oh, for, I think, for damage. You know what? I think they could be going to be willing to do it. If the rest of the world calms down mm -hmm. and says, all right, we see your point of view. We don't necessarily agree with it, but if what you're saying is so and you prove it by your actions, um, we'll help you mop up this, this spilt milk. Yeah. You know, America is a forgiving country. Oh, yeah. We, um, we've got short memories. Yeah. I mean, we're not a, a fanatical, wild-eyed bunch. But now... The second part of the question I think that w we were talking about was leadership. <sighs> you know what's really scary? Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and then Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Oh, I mean, know. these are... Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, you know who supposedly has Biden's ear? John Kerry. Oh, yeah. Well, you got that. That's a rogue bunch there. Yeah. And then the, the second tier, I think under that, I would say that's probably your leadership team. And Blankenship, I think, is Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. I guess you throw him into that pile, too. Um, but then you've got the progressives, AOC mm -hmm. and her wandering band of nutcakes. Um, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders. By the way, uh, Granny Warren and Bernie, have they uttered one word about what's going on? I haven't seen them quoted. I haven't seen them near uh, a camera, and both of them love the bloody camera. Uh, Bernie was on Colbert night before last, and he's pretty pretty adamant about this that we gotta. He's he's quite hawkish about it right now. Uh, it, he doesn't fit with the uh, no. Barack Obama, and and by the way, um, you know. Of course, he was still trying to fly. You know. Yeah. Um, Barack Obama, without being silly or blasphemous or something like that, but it's almost like a godlike aura over the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is still, uh, I think, he thinks he's the compass that points the way we should be going. Because certainly Joe hasn't had an original thought. No. Um, uh, since yeah, probably it's, grade school. It's, it's unique. With both parties are doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. You got King Trump and you got the holy, the holy savior Obama. I mean, uh, 
they're like the pillars out here. You guys are gone. You're done. Yeah. Give it up. You know, um, the dog track is closed. Go home. Again, uh, there was a, uh, someone said they are not going to run for governor of Arizona. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And Trump, good. That's the best thing that ever happened. Trump opposes him. He's got his hand-picked candidate. Oh, yeah. He's, he's ready to pick yeah. who's going to run for Yeah. Well. I mean, he really and truly thinks he still has that crown on his head. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just dangerous in his way, well, I swear, as Putin is. Yeah, a different way, but... Yeah, you're, but they're both mutton heads. Yep. It, it's strange how we got into that that era, and I, it kind of started. See, I have to go back again to say, Bush doesn't look so bad now, does he? I never thought Bush looked bad in the I first didn't, place. I didn't either. It was kind of a uh, easy to watch, easy to listen to, kind of blunder once in a while. But he did it innocently, and all just like. Do you know what I always said? I said, you know, who would you rather have a beer with? Yeah. W. Oh, He'd yeah. be a good guy to go to the ball game with and sit in the luxury box. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything less. If, no, of course but, not. And, and have a few beers with and watch the game. Mm -hmm. He'd be a good guy. And he, he was, he was not thin-skinned. Right. His wife used to laugh at him because he couldn't say the word nuclear. He'd still bumble over it. But you, you kind of. You saw what he was made of. Yeah, exactly. He was on 9/11. Yeah, exactly. He 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 did step up. You know? He did. He stepped right up to the plate. Mm -hmm. So these people that knocked these buildings down are going to hear from us. Yeah. I uh, no, I I think history will treat him much gentler than we treated him while he was in office. Oh, but I, of course, you're right. But of course, who was doing the dissing? Mm -hmm. the, the Democrats who yeah. were out of power and what were they shoveling mud at them, you know? The only thing, what, what, I'm, I'm listed as unenrolled, or I don't know what we call it in this state. Yeah, but I voted independent. Yeah, I voted uh, Republican for most of all my life. And it, it really just bothers me sometimes to what the direction that some of these people are taking, what I consider my party. You know, when they start quoting that green, Margaret Mary, whatever the hell she is, she's uh, uh, Margaret Taylor Green. Oh, she's a rep from uh, Georgia or Florida, some someplace place, down there. Uh, yeah, she was in the paper again this morning. Yeah, she said, well, we don't like the Sandy Hook to think that. Well, that never happened. Those kids never got killed there. Yeah, yes. stupid stuff like that. It, and they, she's got her mouth going all the time. There's a couple more of them that are just you, you, embarrassing. You, you know what you really have got to stop and think about is the electorate yes. that put her, we'll put her in, in Washington. Yep. I mean, she is a, a, well, her and the other one, two women, Republicans, were the ones who were heckling. The president, while he yeah, was speaking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that isn't low-grade nonsense, it, it it took your your status and your your visual image that people have been trying in your own party build up and build up and just destroying it. Well, of course, and, and they're getting a lot of grief mm -hmm. in the liberal newspapers. But where were those same people when Nancy Pelosi tore his speech up? I think. Well, the Media, the people didn't say too much because we get we get that global global one say, but uh, I, I, there was a lot of recoil in that. I, I thought that was rude as hell too. You know, I'm going to just jump way ahead here because I got something that uh, I we probably would never get to. Well, let's jump on. But it I'm going to go right to the front with it. You said the magic word. I'm canceling the globe again. Ah. Oh. Today, did you see today's? Yeah. With the cover on yeah. the thing? 
the 150th well, anniversary. I couldn't help but notice that globe was four cents. Down on the right-hand corner, they've got their price three dollars and a half. <laughs> well, I know things got more expensive at four cents to three fifty. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Here's a perfect example. Every single bloody day in the globe, we have the attack Trump page. Mm -hmm. Look what we got here. A week of legal setbacks for Trump in Washington. National Archives says Trump took classified documents to Mar-a-Lago. Judge refuses to toss lawsuits against Trump. Judge says Trump must testify, blah, blah, blah. Accounting firm says Trump's financial statements aren't reliable. Judge orders ex-Trump organization CFO to sit for deposition. Fringe plot to reverse 2020 election splits Wisconsin GOP. And on and on it goes every single bloody day. And yeah. you know what? Well, they reported. Uh, that's a, um, uh, here it is. I am throwing the globe away. But the problem with that, well, that's not a real problem. It's just, it's called spin. And it's oh, not. This, go, this goes beyond spin. But it's not untrue. Most of that stuff is true. But it's highlighted. It's centered as, as the, the, the key dues for the day. The headlines are think, misleading. I don't think there's anybody in this country that, that thinks that Trump wasn't a crook. Well, he, everybody that dealt with him in business got screwed. He's a hard business he got, man. He got screwed. Yeah. He would leave you hanging with debt and stuff. It's a fact that he's not a trustworthy individual when it comes to money issues. He never has been. He never will be. Yep. No, listen, he is a multi-flawed individual. Oh, absolutely. Brilliant. Smart as a whip. Uh, and can converse on more bloody subjects than uh, you can imagine. But you can't trust him. But you can't, yeah. Uh, but at what point, when, when you say you got to get a handshake with the guy and he, you, gotta, you have to uh, count, count your, your fingers, fingers to make right. sure you still got them all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if only he would shut his mouth, yep. act like an administrator, that's and right. that's it. You're total right. He, he's got great policies. Uh, we wouldn't have our Republican Party all rendered and cut a cut this this branch and this branch and they're fighting amongst themselves and stuff. Wherever he goes, he leaves a trail of chaos and destruction. Boy, does he ever. He certainly does. And I think, and I, I'm probably wrong, I usually am wrong. No, you're but, not. No, listen, this, you, you might have, I'm going to tell you. I remember I you think, being right. It was, I think, about 12 or 14 shows ago. One time. That's yeah, right. Right. That was my highlight. I still, <laughs> I'm still bragging about that one. Uh, but I think if the, we hadn't put up Donald Trump as presidential candidate in 2020, Biden would not have been president today. Oh, I agree with you. Because you got the, Trump came in with so much baggage and so much hatred, not neutral. P people, I, I don't know how many and how you could find this out, but I believe, and I totally believe, that Biden got a lot of votes, a crap load of votes, not for him, but against Trump. Where is the hub of the distrust and the hatred of Trump. It's in New York, where he well, did business. Yeah. They know him. Schumer hates him. Yeah. And it all goes back to business practices. You can't trust the guy. Yeah, I'll build the building over there. And then he builds it, 
and he pays no attention yeah. to the zoning laws or the building permits or whatever. And then when he gets done, he says, well, sue me then. Yeah, yeah. And we'll I'll be in court for seven years. Well, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tie you up so long. That yeah. You won't. But see, he had someone came in with baggage like that. But that's right. Now That people voted against him rather than for, for Biden. If we were to put up a, a candidate, a neutral candidate, because uh, I think Ted, Biden is really weak. Ted Cruz? Maybe even Ted Cruz, but at that point. I like Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz at that point hadn't. Marco Rubio? Yeah, him too. Yeah. Because uh, those are the two that I would have been. If, if Trump had flopped, yep. I would like to have seen one of those two. Yep. Uh, I think they would have been sitting in the White House right yeah. now. I think Marco Rubio is a little quicker on his feet. Yeah, I do uh, too. Uh, and uh, has a gentler persona, where Cruz is the kind of guy that if he got halfway through the conversation, he'd like to smack you right in the mouth, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Cruz has got some rough edges, but nothing compared to Trump. Yeah, because I, I say that. But I agree with you. Biden is sitting there because Donald Trump ran. Well, of course, now, because who the hell would vote, who would vote for Biden as Biden? Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. You might as well vote for a blank wall. Yeah. I mean, he's just... But, but again, I take that one step further, that thing that there's this massive conspiracy and there was millions of people involved in fraud and they threw over the election. That's just, that's just sour grapes. That's just ridiculous. It was just like Hillary Clinton yep. and the vast right-wing right conspiracy. Yeah, well, she, she admitted afterwards, we had to have something to say. Mm -hmm. It's a good throwaway line. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so we, 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 got it. we brought it on ourselves, actually. Well, you're absolutely well, you right did, about did. that. Uh, I'm searching for something here. Um, Actually, I would like to uh, say that I don't know exactly how this whole situation is going to end up. And I think we're going to have to just wait and see. Today, you don't know. Well, you, you, you know, a year or two ago, we could have sat here. We saw something coming. We said, well, you know, this is going to happen. I mean, usually it did. Today, I don't know. You, you hear it sounds like a horse, looks like a sp horse, smells like a horse, and turn, open the door and it turns out to be a unicorn. <laughs> you know, Stra state hate crimes rose for the third year in a row. So my opinion on that? Yeah. I don't like that word hate crimes. I think, it's, I think a, it, a, it's a it's a catch-all term. There's I'm not saying there's no such thing as a hate crime. But it's begotten such a big net that if it's nothing else, we're going to call it a hate crime when we're going to prosecute it that way. We, I think it, it results in a lot of, of over-prosecutions. It, it, you know what? It's something to, to, to uh, penalize people with. We're going to put you on for a hate crime. Yep. You know, but define a hate crime. I That's don't what think, I mean. You can't, I don't what think is you it? can. Uh, look. Right. I, this is stupid. I can't be doing two things at once here. Look, if I killed someone, yep. isn't that the ultimate hate crime? Of course it is. That I hated you enough to kill you? Mm -hmm. Well, by gosh, by golly. Now, is that... There was a case. A woman called... She was in the park... Now she was way out of line, but oh, she I know where said, you're going. "Yeah, she said to some Spanish people mm -hmm. uh, that I guess they were making a lot of noise. She, you know, speak English. Mm -hmm. Go back to your stupid country." She was hauled in for a hate crime. Yep. Uh, so which is the more serious of the two? Mm -hmm. That you go slit somebody's throat. That's right. That's uh, what I said it, it's over. It's overcharged. Yeah. But but it's a convenient catch-all. It's a it's a pros prosecutors are quick to use it now, and they don't get any pushback because if you push back, it's racist. Yeah, 
Oh, yeah. And there's nothing a liberal hates worse than being called a, even be thought a racist. That, that's the worst you could call them. It's about as serious as it gets, I'll tell you. Um, by the by, we both had guns. Fellows, yeah. Uh, I believe in the Second Amendment. Um, I'm a gun guy, I guess. But you know what? You know what really and truly screws things up? Is people that uh, go off the deep end. For instance, a woman in Newbury, Mass, was arrested. Um, she had run amok and started, oh, she called the uh, communication center in the town 11 times and made derogatory statements towards the police and indicated she was loading several guns. So the police said, maybe it's time we paid a little more attention here, got SWAT team, mm -hmm. went in the house, and guess what they found? 30 firearms. Okay. Um, and um, they arrested her uh, for, on a warrant for threats to commit a crime. Now, it doesn't say in here whether or not they're charging her with uh, illegal possession or unregistered weapons. Yep, that's... That could change matters. That would, that would be the game changer. That the fact would. that she owns 30 weapons yeah. should not be a, a, right. a, a factor. Now, I know it's here, it's shocking that anybody would have 30 weapons. Where I come from, I can tell a lot, I, I got some in-laws got gun cases. I bet you they got 30, 30 different My grandfather weapons in there. They don't call weapons, they're hunting guns yeah. and stuff. But nobody, you, you go out in there, I'll say, oh, well, you got a nice collection. Yeah. yeah. My grandfather had two or three shotguns. Yeah. Uh, he had three or four 22 mm. rifles. Uh, he had a pistol. Uh, that was common. Now, uh, oh, oh my God, my you, God. Got, you got like, you, the, 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 the paper will report that an arsenal was found. In Boroughville, Rhode Island, people reported this guy always shooting. Now, if a guy oh, yeah, I, I owns that. six or eight acres of land, maybe and it was the books you gave me. Maybe it was one of them ghosts. <laughs> maybe he uh, had a good sized lot, and he yep. went out target shooting. Well, one night, the he started shooting indiscriminately. Bullets were hitting trees in people's houses, neighbors' houses. So the cops came. And they charged him with uh, having 200 weapons in his house illegally and pounds of ammunition. I saw that pounds. What the hell is a pounds of ammunition? I never saw it listed as pounds before. Yep. Yep. Um, and of course, we had to uh, get in this description. Um, he was the occasional host of a local far-right YouTube talk show and a failed Republican candidate. Yeah, I, that, that, that part was... They didn't report if he was left-handed or right-handed. They didn't report what his favorite color was. What he watched on TV. Yeah, that's right. Yep. But he was a right-winger. Um, as far, as far as weapons go, you know, if, if you got 300 weapons and they're not registered and they're, but you got to look at it with suspicion, big time. You know what? He's a nut. Yeah. But to have a an array of of weapons, as you call them, um, 
for if you're a hunter or a sportsman, or Collect you shoot competitively. Collector. Shoot competitive. Uh, I know friends of ours, well, they since have moved to Florida, but they've shot uh, skeet and uh, what's the other one? Skeet. One is skeet and one is trap. Trap. And between the two of them, they both did it. Yeah. They must have had 18, 20 shotguns How about of a different guy? kinds. Some of them were at five, six thousand dollars a piece. Oh yes. <coughs> um, my wife inherited uh, the contents of her aunt's home. Mm -hmm. She had a half interest in the aunt's home, her and her sister. They inherited it when she passed away. She had no children. Um, and my wife inherited the, uh, all the stuff inside mm -hmm. the house. So um, she brought home couple of shot, uh, a shotgun, a couple of shotguns. Uh, one was a 12 gauge and I think they're both 12 gauge. But one was a very expensive shotgun. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I called George Murray, who uh, was a real estate agent here in town, a big gun collector. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said to him, George, could I bring this shotgun over your house and have you take a look at it? He said, sure, yeah, love to. Come on, bring it over. So I, he lived across the street from okay. me, diagonally. So I walked over, and he, when he got his hands on it, he goes, oh, my. He broke it down. He, oh, he says, it's been fired. He said, this is a, and he named the thing, I, I, an obscure handmade mm -hmm. weapon. He said, if this was unfired, Billy, it'd be a $5,000 gun. That's what the collectors want, unfired mm -hmm. guns. He said, but it's been fired, but it's in beautiful condition. He said, but, he said, for tax purposes, you uh, put down, he said, I'll be, Honest with you, she'd so get 500 bucks for that all day long. But boy, if that thing was pristine. Well, anyway, you can spend four or five thousand on a on a Beretta. Yeah, uh, yeah. A shotgun. Uh, so I uh, I took it home and said to Susie, uh, "It's worth 500 bucks." She said, "Really?" And I said, "Yeah." She said, um, "That's what I said. That's what George said." Knock, 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 knock on the door. George said, Billy. He said, I can't let that gun out of my sight. <laughs> he said, he pulled out a ward. He said, here's $500. Yeah, he said, good. Bill, that's a fair price. I said, I, I trust you, George. I've known you for it. Yeah, yeah. And I said to Susie, what do you think? Get the money! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, the collectors. Now, I know a couple of guys um, collected German Lugas. Yep. So, do you think that if a guy's got 18 or 20 German Lugas, he's going to go nuts some night no. on a four, uh, six cans of Budweiser and go shoot up the neighborhood? Mm -mm. Um, after World War II, they, those things changed hands for fifty or seventy-five bucks a piece. If oh yeah. That. yeah. Oh yeah. There, there was a lot. There was hundreds yeah. of them around. Now try to buy one for under twenty-five hundred bucks. Oh, you you won't. You know, and speak and speaking of guns, this is one thing I do not agree with, and is that to hold a gun manufacturer liable for something that somebody did with that weapon. Now, I see you can hold the gun manufacturer liable if they were negligible. I can't even say that word. In manufacturing. If the breech blew up in yeah, your or, face. Or else it because of picked a, it up yeah. and it would go off. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's liability on the manufacturer. The fact that somebody legitimately bought that gun. And it, and it was functionally perfect. Or, yeah. And they went out and committed a crime with it. 
that should not be the responsibility of the no. manufacturer. Now, they're trying to bang Ramington for, uh, what was it? R uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, for one of the uh, atrocities. I think in Connecticut. Yeah, the yeah. one down now, Connecticut. They had nothing to do any more than you can sue General Motors. For a Buick. Yeah, the, the, that the, somebody went out and uh, and ran it, over a kid in a crosswalk. Yeah, hit two, hit two people and yeah. uh, killed them both. Yeah, uh, that's uh, ridiculous. That's that's again, that's overcharging and that's abusing the the statutes and the. This guy right here was denied parole. He took a fourteen-year-old kid into the woods and beat him to death yeah. with a baseball bat because he wanted to f know what it felt like to kill somebody, yeah. okay? He belongs in prison for the rest of his stinking rotten life, but you can't go sue Louisville Slugger no, for what so, he did with That's it. exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, we could just have a couple of minutes left. I want that's to talk right. about this real quick. Okay. An oil leak can mean Ooh. financial disaster to your family. We called the oil my insurance company. And I did too. To see if I, I had to fill out a form. I had to have Cronin uh, write a form up about my uh, oil tank. It's only two and a half years old. Brought it down to the insurance company, 83 bucks for a rider, and now I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but. So, folks, if your oil tank leaks, your homeowners may not cover it. Particularly, our, our Liberty said that because we've had that policy for 35 years or something, or more, I guess, 40 years, there's no rider exclusion on it. Policies that are written in the last, I don't know, I don't remember, I, don't quote me the time. But, Policies that are what they call newer policies have exclusions on them. Yes. And if there's an exclusion, they're not going to cover it. He That's says right. if there's no exclusion, the law says they cover it rather than not cover it. So he said, don't worry about it. I said, well, we're going to look to 80 to $100 uh, extra coverage on it anyway. He yeah. Says, yeah so that's a good idea. You know, it's just one more thing that allows you to sleep yeah. at night. It's the same thing. We, we bought a... You know, the, you, your your homeowner has a liability or a personal liability yeah. uh, um, on it, and I think they use about a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand or something. No, yeah, yeah. It doesn't cost much to get a million dollars. No, on it. and it, today you don't know what you're going to get sued for. You know, this fifty dollar or fifty five fifty thousand dollar lawsuit. Those they that's that's nothing. You know, an umbrella policy yeah. is not expensive, and it is great protection. All you need. Mm -hmm. is for somebody to come in, well, fall down, break her arm, arm or leg, yeah, exactly. or have, you know, and, and sue you for $300,000. Yeah, and then they say, well, you know, you got to pay for future earning potentials. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, this, this guy was probably going to be an attorney someday. Well, and, and not only that, but as a result, she got a blood clot in her leg, yep. and she had a massive stroke. And she's going to be a vegetable for the rest of her life, all because that that board was loose in your yeah, house that's or right. some bloody thing. You, you can't take you know, a chance. Just quick, I, yeah. We had a leak one time, and right after the service people were there, they put a new you know the filters and stuff. They cross threaded the whoa the thing going in, and left. And I came home. I was on run. I said, "Smell that fuel." I looked downstairs, and there's this puddle underneath the, the tank. So right now I called the fuel oil company. I won't tell you who it was. You know what the first words was? Don't do nothing. If you got any kitty litter, spread kitty litter on it or something. But don't, don't call. We'll be right there. Don't go calling. The, there's no fire danger at this point. Don't call the fire department. Don't do this because uh, we'll take care of it. They came in, and they... Threw some chemical down on it and swept it up. And yep. That was it. It, was, it wasn't a. It wasn't a big puddle. A big but like the table. It was a, yeah. a wet spot yeah, yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Right on the floor. But he says they will make such a fuss over that that you'll yeah. you'll never live it down. You know, we have accidents here in town. Hose down the gas that leaked out. Mm -hmm. That's the end of it. 
now, oh, oh it, it's like nuclear contamination. Mm -hmm. You know, close on big one mile circumference around the uh, accident site, everybody get white clothes on and holy moly. Well, folks, on that charming, uplifting note, um, we're going to take a time out and we'll do part two of the show here after we've had a breather. Thank you.